everyone, James Mansell here bringing you yet another video. Oh my God, you guys. So, you guys have requested that I do an in-depth hairline tutorial, how to do a rooted hairline on a hard front wig. Well, today's your lucky day. I have a hard front wig and I'm gonna show you it in depth. I dug around and I realized I actually had an extra RuPaul wig, the platinum blonde one. <laughs> I kept it, you know, for memories, but I'm just gonna style it because let's be honest, it's just gonna take up space in my apartment. Here we go, take it out. We don't have to show it off because I already showed you what the wig looked like previously. And if you wanna watch that, just check out my RuPaul video, the very first one. And we are going to do the in-depth teasing out of a rooted hairline. I know cosplayers could benefit from this or people who are on a budget and want a budget-friendly wig. If you can't afford a lace front wig or if you have a certain hairline that, you know, a Vivica Fox collection just can't simply achieve, then this hairline is the hairline for you. All right, let's just get it all. All right, first things first, before I do anything, let me make sure it's actually on the head properly. I'm putting it here because I assume that's where the part was, but looking at the ear tab placement, it is not in fact where the part is. So let us make sure our ear tabs are aligned up. Now, of course, you don't have to like go along with this, but I mean, it's gonna be easier on you if you know where your stopping points are. So, let's just fix that around. Okay, I have it pinned down now. I put as many pins as I could in the front of this hairline. And what I like about these RuPaul wigs is that some of them are actually pre-teased, and this blonde one was one of them. So, what I'm gonna do here is brush out some of the hairspray that was on the wig so I can unlock it. And it's already pre-teased, which actually works out really good in our favor because we have to do lots and lots of teasing to the front of the hairline. So, what we're going to do here is take this soft section of hair and we are going to take our teasing brush, get settled in, get a good grip on your wig head and on your stand, and we're gonna start working that down. I do a circular tease. And you tease it down like you normally would. So yeah, I'm doing a circular tease, which is like a tease like that. And just doing it small, small sections at a time. And if you're into boxing, you know this hand motion already. Pretend it's a bag. Doing them small sections at a time, all along the front of the wig. Ugh, I have to say this blonde RuPaul wig, the Polish Platinum, this was the best one. I've told you guys this a million times and I'm so glad I actually bought an extra one because they're all kind of gone from Party City now. And if any of them was worth getting, it was definitely this one. And I'm glad I did because I know I'll actually probably get a few wears out of this. Okay, that's our first round of teasing. Now we're going for our second round of teasing. So, we're gonna pick our hair again, get a grip of it, and we're gonna start combining the hairline all together. If you do this right, we can actually get through and start styling it and teasing the whole wig up. When you start to tease the rest of the hair, this front section should stay intact. But you have to make sure that it is locked together, so we're gonna French lace the whole front of it. Because girl, we're like the government, we got things to hide. Yeah, we are teasing the hair together, packing it all together, because we want like a solid row of hair for the front, because that's supposed to make up our hairline. Okay, now comes time for round three, which is a little bit complicated for some of you, I noticed, like what I mentioned doing it, so I'm gonna get really, really slow with it. Let me just adjust myself and fix it so you can see. Okay, now that it's all combined, we are gonna start creating the hairline. So, taking my brush and my palm, I put my palm here and pull the brush down. And it's sort of like, if you've ever done baby hairs on a wig before, it's sort of similar to that. We're pulling down small sections of the teasing to basically help create our hairline. These are what's gonna create the hairline. Okay, and now I switch my position on my palm from here to here, and I'm gonna hold that down and brush upward. And you wanna do this all along the hair. And it's gonna start coming apart when you do it, so that's why you gotta make sure your tease is really, really good on that front section that's gotta lock it all in place. So really just mat it down, which means you gotta be as mean as humanly possible to this, okay? And the sideburns are always the most complicated part. They'll give you the most trouble every time. Ah, but this is an old, 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 old school drag queen trick. 
Actually, I don't even know if it started with drag queens. That's the first like community I've heard use it. I'm pretty certain it's probably like a theater thing for a long time too. But drag queens are really the ones that I know it for. So that's why I kind of credit it to and refer to it back to. Like if you watch those old pageants for like Miss US of A and stuff like that, a lot of the girls have hair like this. Like 1993 through the 80s, you'll see a lot of these hairlines. And some places on eBay still have them. Like if you go to like Vegas girl wigs, you'll see a lot of hair like that. Now we have a front section here working itself real nicely. What we're gonna do now is go in with our hairspray. So, hairspray and spritz it. I'm going back and forth with my hands, like wax on, wax off. Because what it's supposed to do is create a split in the hair that's unnoticeable. So like the split goes like that. That's what the teasing is doing. It's splitting like that and it's parting, but you can't see the obvious part in the hair. It's supposed to be like a nice flatness here. That's how you know you did it right when your teasing was really good. And it generally helps if the wig hair is a little better too. Like on the costume wigs, I always have problems with this. And like I said, the sideburn is always gonna be the most complicated one. And it's gonna give you the most trouble. So you're gonna fuss with that the most. All right, now we go in with our blow dryer. Plug my blow dryer in, first of all. My goodness, I thought I was prepared. Let's wet our hair up. From a distance. Okay, low heat. Do not do high heat. You will regret it. It'll start to like fry the hair. And it'll turn into like a gross ramen noodle texture. There. Don't get excited and just go all up in there like that. Don't do that. Keep it like a good like three inches away. All right, that is a sickening hairline forming. Okay, now when you're feeling really good about yourself and you feel like the, it's getting like the place you want it, you take your pump it up gold and spritz it from a distance. Go through with your hands and smooth and do the heat again. So yeah, what the heat is doing is it's basically melting the fibers in place, like it's melting them together. And if you do it right, when you start to style the rest of the hair, like I said, it's not gonna go anywhere. This is gonna stay solid as a rock. You have to take your time, make sure it is exactly the way you want it. All right, I'm gonna do the rest of this off camera. I'll be right back. <laughs> all right, I am back. This is the hairline all rooted out and solid as a rock. <laughs> yeah, I did it from Ooh, excuse your puff. I did all the way from sideburn to sideburn. So that is how your hairline should look. All right, now it's time to cut the hairline. So I'm gonna take my scissors and what I like to do to start with, let me get this hair out of the way so you can see, is I take a small bite out of the hair and we're gonna get, cut it to about here, but you wanna start big and then work your way smaller. And ideally, you'd wanna like put this on your head and size it from there. But I really like this hair and I don't feel like taking it off. So I'm just gonna do it on camera for you. And one of the good things about this is, let me show you. Make sure I got all those little pieces snipped. Snip, 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 snip away with you. Snip, snip. Okay. Snip, snip, okay. The best part about this is that you keep this because if there's any mistakes in the hairline, you actually can take pieces of this hair and add it to the hairline to make it bigger or smaller or to cover up any mistakes. You just use lots of hairspray and spray it in there. Or you can even go so far as to like glue it in if you want. Cause you know, it's, it's hair, it's acrylic hair. It's not gonna matter. Okay, but bear in mind. So if it's too small for your head, take some of that and glue it there. And voila, you have a longer sideburn. So, Save that, put it to the side, and let's start cutting it smaller. And for me, I usually leave the sideburns longer because I don't like to glue down the sides of my hair. So it'll help cover some of that, you know, this extra security. That way you don't have your sideburns peeking out. All right, now I'm gonna start cutting it smaller. Okay, now we're working our way smaller. And blow dry some to dry it off. And what I do with the blow dryer is, I can get closer to it now because I'm going to the very, very tips 
and I kind of brush along the tips like that with the nose of the blow dryer. Now what this does when you brush against it, when the hair is wet like that from the hairspray, the blow dryer I push against it, that way it looks flatter against the forehead. So that way it lays flatter. Okay, I'm gonna go in and start taking bites with the scissors. And the way I take bites is just like side to side, like because that's how hair grows out. So it creates like little triangles. And this is the part that actually takes the longest because you want to take your time with it. You don't want to rush it because otherwise you could chop off too much hair and you have like holes in the hairline. It looks weird. I actually, in that first RuPaul wig with this one that I did, there is a hole in the hairline that I have to this day and it still bothers me. So now I'm probably going to take some of the scrap hair from this wig, since it's the same wig, and put it on there just to repair it. So what you want to do is just take your time with this hairline and if there is a problem, fix it. Because these wigs and these hairlines can actually last a really long time. <laughs> like all the RuPaul ones, like despite how awful they were, these like hard front wigs that you put these hairlines in really, really hold up. And see, this is the part where you can get creative. Like say you want to do a widow's peak, you cut a widow's peak into it. This hairline is completely up to you to doctor. I know for some of you that do the cosplay stuff, some wigs you can't, you know, physically achieve what kind of hairline you need. Like if you need like this super extreme widow's peak, it's really hard to achieve that on a lace front wig because a lot of them, especially synthetic wigs, you can't pluck them or else the hair is just gonna tear the lace. So this is a good alternative, and especially if it's for a convention or something, you want something that's going to like withstand traveling and stuff. All right, I'm going to finish the rest of this off camera, and I will be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. This is the final result. Okay, so I was going to trim more of the hairline on camera while I had it on my head, but girl, I trimmed the hairline so fiercely this time, I don't have to trim anything on camera. But normally, you'd want to try the wig on and trim around it to make sure it fits your head. But girl, I was slaying this wig today. Oh my God. Now this is the final result it is the RuPaul wig and I picked this because I had it laying around and I knew exactly how it would turn out if I just did a quick tease to it. And this is what you get when you just tease it out and brush through it. Let me just take a moment to reminisce about how this was the best RuPaul wig. <sighs> okay, memory's over. Now this wig is just missing one more thing. The James Mansfield Magical Wig Spray from Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. Let's just give this wig a spritz. <sighs> now my wig smells just like cream soda. Available at blackphoenixalchemylab.com. And groovy can be an absolute drag, but thankfully with Manscaped, you can get 20% off with my code Mansfield20. It's for your no-no bits. You know, that part. Oh my God, I smell like Jasmine Masters. It's for anywhere with hair. And it's even waterproof. Wow. Bonus plug. Like my lipstick, it is Mai Tai from Gerard Cosmetics. Use my code James, J-A-Y-M-E-S, for 30% off. So influential. Now let's stop all this promo talk and have a really serious moment. A Ven moment. The moment where I take a moment for all of you who tip me on Venmo. Here we go. I would like to take a Ven moment for Ben, Max, Ike, honestly Ike, I think you like me, and Parker. Thank you all so much for the tips on Venmo. I love your tips. Now I am feeling like a polished platinum babe. Not bad for a Party City wig. Now this is your rooted hairline. Another term for it is the French fry hair because it looks like little teeny tiny french fries. So if you have a hard front wig laying around, give this a try. Try doing a rooted hairline. It actually is really, really effective, especially if you're performing on stage or a Hamburger Mary's or something like that. It is a great hairline, especially if you need something that's a little bit more unique. And if your first try doesn't go exactly how you want it, just remember, practice, 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 girl. Oh my God, backstory to that. When I was first starting out in drag, I knew a queen here locally who had gorgeous makeup and I was such a booger. I wanted to know, how did she get her makeup so smooth and applied so beautifully? And her words of wisdom were, practice, 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 girl. Gee, thanks. Now don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, Bye! James Mansfield made a video styling a rooted hairline. <laughs>
However, when she finished the video, she forgot to mention her own line of wigs available at jamesmansfieldbeauty.com. Before we get into the tea, don't send any hate to James Mansfield, James Mansfield Beauty, or anyone else involved in this controversy. So what's the big issue? When James Mansfield forgets to mention her own line of wigs at James Mansfield Beauty, you miss out on custom styled wigs or even wigs that she's hand curled herself. Does James Mansfield not care about her fans? I also heard she's responsible for Veronica Mars not being renewed for another season. Sound off in the comment section below. Click here and see me try out Kimchi Chic Beauty. Oh, so we repaint the LaDonna doll from Kid Robot. Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, I'll make sure Logan never comes back on the next season of Veronica Mars. <laughs> Just kidding. It's canceled. So click it. 